Hi, I'm Bill Sharlap, and you're watching First Look. Hello, I'm Don Woz, president of Blue Note Records, and our guest on this edition of First Look is one of the most important figures in the label's 82-year legacy, the acclaimed pianist, my good friend, Bill Sharlap. Over the last 25 years, uh, Bill and his longtime trio, consisting of Peter Washington on bass and Kenny Washington on the drums, recorded some timeless albums for Blue Note, like Written in the Stars, Stardust, his tribute to Leonard Bernstein called Somewhere, and Live at the Village Vanguard. The trio's new recording, Street of Dreams, marks not only their first release on the label uh, in a decade now, but their first trip to the recording studio since the lockdown of 2020. It's a beautiful record that showcases not only uh, each musician's mastery of their instrument, but the incredible interplay and conversation going on within the band. Bill, thanks for joining us today on First Look. Thank you so much, Don. I'm delighted to be here with you. <laughs> Good. Man, I, I want to tell everyone about how you introduced me to the music on the new album. It was, it was very classy, very old school, even though we're in the middle of a lockdown and separated on different coasts, uh, rather than me listening for the first time on my phone uh, while I was on the freeway driving or something like that. We had a really good old fashioned sit down listening session, albeit on a Zoom call together and listening over great audio system, looking you in the eyes, it was like a COVID era version of something you must have done many times with my predecessor, Bruce Lundvall. And it underscored how great it is to have you and Peter and Kenny back on the label, man. Well, thanks so much, Don. It was a wonderful thing to be able to share that with you. And you know how it is when you listen with another pair of ears that understands what's happening musically. It's like surround sound. You know, you could listen to a piece that you've listened to hundreds of times and you listen to it with somebody else and you'll hear something new. I think that's part of the collective unconscious listening experience that happens when people get together. And uh, so I was very happy that we could have that moment. Me too. It was beautiful. During that listening session, the intimacy of the recording uh, really stood out. James Farber, who recorded and mixed the album, did such an incredible job of capturing every tiny nuance of the plan. And it really underscores the depth of the conversation in the trio, which has been playing together for a quarter century now. Uh, let's talk about what makes this trio so special. Well, Kenny Washington and Peter Washington are the things that make it so special for me. Their incredible connection to each other, their profound uh, understanding of the music, the sound that they make individually at their instruments, um, their originality, their chemistry together, and uh, all of our chemistry together. It's 33 and a third. And that's what I like about <laughs> the 33 and a third. Uh, and I guess that leaves one tiny percent for leadership, which means Let's go, let's go left this time. But the fellows might say, no, I don't think so. I say, okay, we'll go right. You know, <laughs> it's like that. I might make certain decisions, but I'm always, uh, always listening, always listening to what they're doing. And uh, ultimately that conversation just continues with us. And sound is so important to us. The sound that we make collectively and at our individual instruments. And as you said, James Farber has such brilliant technique and beautiful ears and experience in recording so much of this music and all different types of players, different types of uh, rhythm sections, but he really understands the aesthetic deeply and he knows how to capture everything without doing anything false. We control all of our own dynamics, uh, yet the depth of the tonal centers of the instruments themselves is never compromised. And uh, you can always hear what everybody is doing. Nothing's too loud, nothing's too soft. Mm. Farber's the best there is. And Mark Wilder, who does the mastering, also does very beautiful work. The, the control you have, just your, your keyboard touch, man. It's so, it's so nuanced and so, it's so refined, you know, that, that you can play so light or, or hit, hit hard and it, it 
it's just hard to do. That's all. <laughs> that's the thing that blows my mind. It's it's, it's you make it look easy, but it's it, what you're doing is really complex. And you, you know, Peter's one of my my favorite bass players, and it's just he, he he's always playing the right note, and getting the right tone. It's never never flashy, never for the for the sake of showing off. It's never acrobatics, but it's just the perfect thing all the time. It's it's a well, marvelous record, man. He loves the way that you play, and uh, as do I. Uh, and uh, I know that your kindred spirits in uh, what Ron Carter calls finding the right note, you know, finding, the right note, right. finding that special note and uh, the sound. It's, it's really uh, something. Peter is special. I could hear that in the, in the album. It's a beautiful record. The, f the first single from the album uh, is the old Dave Brubeck song, The Duke. What, mm -hmm. what, what made you choose this one? Well, I love Brubeck's music and I loved the man. He was a beautiful person and I was fortunate to get to know him. Um, and this particular composition is one of his great compositions. The Duke, of course, written for Duke Ellington, who was Brubeck's greatest influence. Um, his two greatest influences were Duke Ellington and Darius Mio, the great French composer who he studied with, Brubeck studied with Mio. Mm -hmm. And um, the original name of the tune was The Duke Meets Darius Mio. Did you know that? I didn't because know that. Mm -hmm. Brubeck is quite <laughs> famous for the uh, bitonal types of things he would do, two key centers at the same time, we know. Uh, and in the bridge of The Duke, that's what happens. That's where The Duke meets Darius Mio. Of course, he decided that that was uh, not as sexy of a title as just The Duke, so The Duke is a better <laughs> But that's what's happening in that piece, in a way. Uh, Marion McPartan, McPartland told me, you have to record the Duke. She had heard me play it and she was very uh, effusive about the way I was interpreting it. That was so nice to hear from a grand master like her. And so at the very end, you'll hear a progression. It goes, boo, 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 ba. It's our little ending, you know? If you listen very carefully, you'll notice that that progression is Marion's kaleidoscope. And uh, it's there just to uh, try to gracefully thank Marion for nudging me to record the Duke. That's a beautiful gesture, man. Let, let's listen to a little bit of it. Okay. That's the Bill Charlap trio, the Duke from his new Blue Note release, Street of Dreams. Uh, now, I'll Know is a, a song, I think of it as Marlon Brando's biggest hit. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a very unappreciated ballad from Guys and Dolls, written by Frank Lesser, who was a songwriting mentor to your father. Let, let's talk about that. That's right. Frank Lesser was a giant of American popular uh, songwriting and theater writing and he was a mentor to the young composers who he believed in and he took under his wing composers like Adler and Ross Jerry Ross and Richard Adler who wrote um, Damn Yankees and also wrote The Pajama Game um, and my father was one of those composers that he took under his wing uh, Moose Charlap and he was a mentor to him I love playing this song it makes me think of my father and my father was a huge influence on my life. Even though he left uh, this planet when I was seven years old, I remember him very well. And I remember all of the music that he introduced me to and painters and uh, thoughts about art. And he knew he wasn't well physically. He was a juvenile diabetic and he, he just died too early. He was 46 years old mm -hmm. and he was very vital. He wasn't sickly, but that disease killed people at that time. Um, 
Anyway, he knew that he was probably not going to make it too much longer. And he took my sister, my mother and me all over Europe uh, the year before he died, the summer before he died, and uh, spent money that he didn't have and put us in the nicest places. We were in Cap d'Antibes, we were at the Tivoli Gardens, the Leger Museum, um, uh, staying at the Ritz in uh, London. And uh, we saw all of the great museums and also uh, just experienced um, Italy and France. And when I went back years later, in my early 20s with Jerry Mulligan, it was wonderful to have that memory of my father because I would turn the corner and see the old curiosity shop in London and remember being there with my dad or something like that. Mm. So I'll know, I guess it has um, a feeling of uh, my love for my father in it. That's beautiful, man. Let's play that. Bill Charlotte, Peter Washington, and Kenny Washington from the new album, Street of Dreams. I'll know. The title track, Street of Dreams, closes the album. It's a great Victor Young, Samuel Lewis composition. What drew you to that one? Well, you know, I believe, uh, first of all, the way that the rhythm section plays that groove, the way that Kenny and Peter can play any tempo and sink so deeply into the essence of the tempo and the feeling of the tempo, their sense of orchestration, but um, their patience in making something like that float. You know, it's a half full helium balloon that you just tap and you keep it up in the air. That is something I love about it. But the song itself, Street of Dreams, you know, first of all, New York is the street of dreams. If you're one in a million, there's 10 of you in New York. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that, you know? And, uh, coming out of, I guess, the period that we were in where we felt that isolation, perhaps that's a piece of it, though I wasn't really that conscious of it. But street of dreams is the street of dreams. It could be any kind of street of dreams. It might be something in our mind. It might be something we want to achieve. Frankly, there's a, a very dark undercurrent to the song Street of Dreams. It's not just you'll find love on the Street of Dreams. That's another part of the story, that's all. So uh, there are many, many layers to these songs. That's the thing. Well, knowing all that, let's listen to Street of Dreams. That's Bill Charlap, Peter Washington, Kenny Washington from the new album, Street of Dreams, the title song. Bill, thank you so much for being here with us today. I, I can't tell you how proud and how thrilled we are to have you back on the label. And this incredible album is a perfect way to kick off a, a new era. Thank you, Don. I am so delighted to be here with you and to be with Blue Note. And I thank you for your incredible support of what we're doing. and. Uh, it's just delightful. Okay. Thank and thank you all for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on First Look. If you enjoyed First Look, 
and would like to see more, please hit the subscribe button and also click the bell icon. That way you'll be notified when we post our next video.